3-2, solving inequalities using addition or subtraction. So in this section, we are going to continue uh, to use our prior knowledge of equations and inequalities to solve problems using simple addition or subtraction with inequalities as opposed to equalities. Okay. So our objective is to use addition or subtraction to solve these inequalities. And our essential understanding is that just like we use the properties of equalities to solve equations in chapter two, we're going to use the same properties of inequality to solve these inequalities. And the addition property of inequality is shown below. Applying this property to an inequality produces an equivalent inequality. Equivalent inequalities are inequalities that have the same solutions. So. Just like we do this, when we look at the addition property of inequality, A, B, and C are going to be real numbers. If A is greater than B, then A plus C is greater than B plus C. So basically, all I did was add C to both sides, and I keep my expression the same. And the same is true if we have a less than sign, or A greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. Okay. So if we look at the diagram below, to illustrate one way to think about this rule, right? If we take B and we add C to it, if A is less than, if B is less than A, if we add C and we add the same C, right, the answer is still less than the other answer, okay? And we can do this with an example that 5 is greater than 4. I know that, right? 5 is bigger than 4. So 5 plus 3 is greater than 4 plus 3. 8 is greater than 7. Okay. Same thing with negative numbers. Um, and basically, it just means that if we add the same thing to both sides of the equation, the equation will stay balanced, whether it is an equality or an inequality. And my steps to solve these are going to be the same as they were with an equality. I want to isolate the variable by doing inverse operations. So there's my variable. I'm going to add 15 to both sides. Okay, I add 15 and that keeps my equation balanced. So we have x is greater than 3. Now to graph this solution, okay, I'd simply make a number line and make it make sense. Let's do this. Okay. So 3 is right there. That's going to be my boundary point. I'm going to put an open circle because it says greater than, not greater than or equal to, and I'm going to shade to the right because x is greater than 3. That means that the, the arrow, x variables on the left, the arrow of the inequality points to the right. The inequality goes to the right. Let's try to got a problem. Same thing. Add 5 to both sides. And we have n is less than 2. Okay, so we're going to 0, 1, 2, 3. Open circle because it is not or equal to, and this time my graph goes to the left. So I'm going to shade that way. So in problem 1, how can you check the final inequality, x greater than 3, describes the, <coughs> the solutions to the original equation? x minus 15 is greater than negative 12. So the original inequality has infinitely many solutions, so we can't check them all. Unlike an equality, we just plug it back in. So we can't check them all. However, you can verify that the final inequality is correct by checking its endpoint and the direction of the inequality symbol. So let's look at this in this problem too. Okay. So for this problem, I'm going to solve it, graph, and check the solutions. Okay, so the first thing I see is I, I see the x on the right-hand side. To isolate the variable, I'm going to do inverse operations, add 3 to both sides. So that's 13 is greater than or equal to x. Okay, so let's make my graph. Let's make it 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So at 13, I'm going to put a solid dot because it says greater than or equal to and I'm going to shade to the left. Careful with this one, 
because the number is on the left hand side okay so it contains that 13 is the biggest solution 13 is greater than or equal to all of the possible values of x so to check this make sure that 13 is a solution to the related equation so if i wanted to check this i could say that 10 is greater than or equal to 13 minus 3 which is 10 is greater than or equal to 10 which is true okay then I could possibly check <laughs> other numbers. Well, I can check any of these numbers in the solution. I could check 8, 9, 10. Let's check 0. 10 is greater than or equal to negative 3. Okay? Which is true. Okay, so that works. Okay. Don't really have to go too, too crazy checking everything but it is nice to make sure that the graph is going the right way and that you can also do by checking the solutions. So here, we're gonna add 11 to both sides. And so we have M is greater than or equal to nine. So let's go four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So I'm going to start at nine. It says greater than or equal to, so that's a solid dot and it's gonna go this way. So I could plug in 9 and we have negative 2 is greater than or equal to negative 2. That works. Or I can check anything above 9. Or I can check anything below 9 and it should not work. For example, the easiest one, 0. Right? Negative 11 is greater than or equal to negative 2. That is not correct. That is not a true statement, which means okay, that zero should not be included in the solution, and it's not since the solution goes to the right away from zero. So another way to think about that and another way to check is to plug in zero. Okay, so that's addition. Let's try subtraction. Subtraction property says the same thing. Well, a, B, and C are real numbers. If A is greater than B, then A minus C is greater than B minus C. As long as you do the same thing to both sides, you're going to keep the equation true. So if A is less than B, if I subtract C from A and subtract C from B, I'm still going to get something that is smaller than uh, the, the other one. So A minus C is less than B minus C. Okay. How do you know when to use the addition property of inequality and when to use subtraction? Well, look at the problem. If it has, <laughs> if the addition property of inequality is used when a number is being subtracted from the variable, and subtraction is used when you're adding, because we always use the inverse operations. So I see addition here. I'm going to solve this by subtracting 6 from both sides using the subtraction property of inequality. So we have T is greater than negative 10. No, I don't want to start at 5. Start at 8, negative 9, negative 10, negative 11, negative 12. Okay. So I'm going to put an open circle there because it doesn't say are equal to, and I'm going to go to the right. And there's my graph. This one? Subtract 12 from both sides to isolate the variable. That's what we're always looking for. We're always looking for the variable to get it by itself. So negative 13 is greater than or equal to y. Okay, so that's negative, yeah, let's put negative 10. Okay, put a solid dot and then put a, a line and a graph going to your right. So let's look at a word problem. <laughs> the hard drive on your computer has a capacity of 120 gigabytes, which they usually come in powers of two. So it's more likely that it has a capacity of 128 gigabytes, but that's okay. We'll use 120. Uh, you, have a, you have used 85 gigs. You wanna save some home videos to your hard drive. 
what are the possible sizes of the home video collection that you can save? Well, if we let, let's define a variable, V equal the size of videos, okay? Well, we want 85, which is the current use space plus the size of my new videos to be less than or equal to the capacity of the hard drive. And there's my inequality, there's my equation, okay? And to solve, now we would just subtract 85 from both sides to give me 35 gigabytes. Let's look at a got a problem. A club has a goal to sell at least at least 25 plants for a fundraiser. Club members sell eight plants on Wednesday, nine plants on Thursday. What are the possible number of plants the club can sell on Friday to meet their goal? All right, well, let's take a look at this. And in our got a problem, we're gonna write and make this inequality, okay? So 25, they wanna sell at least 25 plants. So that is the smallest that I can have. So I want my answer to be greater than or equal to 25, okay? So they sell eight plants on Wednesday, nine plants on Thursday, plus some more plants on Friday, we'll call it P. Okay, so this is going to be uh, 17 plus P combined like terms is greater than 25, and then subtract 17 from both sides to give me that P is greater than or equal to 8. Okay. Can you use the same inequality symbol to represent phrases at least or no less than and greater than or equal to? Yes, you can. That symbol, the greater than or equal to symbol. Okay. That can mean at least <coughs> like it does up here. Okay. Because we said at least 25 pants. So that means that the smallest number of plants I can sell is 25. So that means that this side, the smallest it will be is this number. So that's going to be a greater than symbol, right? Because this number over here is going to be the smallest. No less than. This side is no less than this side, which means that, the, again, the right-hand side is the smaller side. So the greater than or equal symbol will work for those. Less than or equal to? At most, no more than are words that we can use for that, okay? So let's take a look at our quick lesson check. Solve each inequality. We would add four to both sides. We would add two to both sides, subtract five, subtract four. Here, the cyclist takes her bicycle on a chairlift to the top of the slope. The chairlift can safely carry 680 pounds. So 680 pounds. We want the left side to be less than or equal that, or else the chairlift will break, which is bad. So 124 pounds plus 32 pounds for the bicycle and any extra weight that we could put on. All right. So then we just add those together. Plus my extra weight. 680, subtract 156 from both sides. You get that W is less than or equal to 524. How can you use the addition and subtraction properties of inequality to produce equivalent inequalities? Do the same thing to both sides. Same as equations, right? Just do the same thing to both sides. Add the same thing to both sides or subtract the same thing to both sides. What can you do to the first inequality in each pair in order to get the second inequality? Subtract four, 
add one, subtract three, and add two to both sides. Suppose you solve the two inequalities, y plus four is less than or equal to six, y minus four is less than or equal to six. How are the methods the same? Well, we're gonna do the same thing to both sides no matter what, except here we're gonna subtract four, and here we are going to add four. Okay. And that is three dash two solving equations, solving inequalities using addition or subtraction.